Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, July 9th, 2012. Our top story comes from the field of material science. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania have developed a new method for growing organs. Remember last week when we discussed how regenerative medicine had the potential to regrow entire organs, but that there were many technical challenges? Well, a big challenge is vasculature. That's mimicking the network of blood vessels that would be in an organ. Current methods involve essentially printing the organ layer by layer, including hollow vessels. The problem is printing these structures creates seams that can't easily withstand the pressures of the nutrient formula being pumped in. Another issue is that certain cell types, such as liver, can't usually survive the normal layering method. To overcome this issue, the researchers actually printed the vasculature first, a network of hollow filaments. They were made from a mixture of glucose, sucrose, other structural sugars, and reinforced with a coating of biodegradable plastic. Testing with this method went extremely well due to a simplified procedure. Once the filaments are printed, a cell solution is just poured into a mold. Now these filaments are initially quite sturdy, but easily dissolve as the vascular channels form, infusing them with blood vessel cells and even naturally sprouting capillaries. By the way, these tests were done with cultured human cells, including liver, and are approaching clinically functional levels. Obviously, there's still much research to be done, but it's still an important step. It's especially encouraging that the researchers are embracing the open source ideas behind the 3D printers they use. Next is a quick update from the world of medicine. Scientists from the University of British Columbia have successfully treated diabetes in mice. As you're probably aware, diabetes results from the pancreas not producing enough insulin, either from damage and or genetics. Insulin triggers fat, liver, and muscle cells to store sugar from the bloodstream, and maintaining blood sugar concentration is important for overall health. This means diabetes comes with many risks, such as blindness, heart attack, stroke, nerve damage, and kidney failure that can result from excess glucose in the blood. It's a disease that affects many people, but besides careful monitoring and maybe insulin injections, there really aren't options for treatment. Some experiments have even attempted the transplant of healthy pancreatic cells in humans, and despite success, there is a severe lack of donors which is one of the reasons this research is so important. A stem cell-based treatment would avoid many limitations involved with traditional transplants. Basically, human stem cells were transplanted into the pancreas of mice with diabetes. They also had no immune system, so they wouldn't reject the human cells. Still, after about four months of weaning the mice off insulin, they appeared to have functioning pancreases. Like with our first story, there's still much research to be done before it reaches humans, but it's an encouraging development in the fight against diabetes. We end with a story from the field of neuroscience. Research done by the scientists at the University of Washington suggests that we might not all see the same colors. Obviously, certain people have color blindness and other visual disorders, but the question is, do people considered to have healthy vision actually perceive the same thing? Color is actually objective, depending on the wavelength of the light. However, it's not known whether those objective colors have corresponding circuitry in the brain. Now, proving that what someone calls red is actually blue, for example, would probably be impossible. However, it is interesting to consider that the pathways in our brain responsible for perception aren't completely hardwired, and that's certainly what experiments suggest. Many animals can't perceive red, only having photoreceptors that detect blue and green light. In the experiments, though, monkeys were given a gene therapy that gave them red light receptors, and their brains adapted to seeing a completely new set of colors. Interestingly, the gene therapy used on the monkeys is also being investigated to cure color blindness in humans. And just as it gave the monkeys the ability to see red for the first time, it's even possible humans could be given ultraviolet perception using genes from birds. But getting back to the point, if how we perceive color isn't necessarily the same, what are the implications of that? Well, for certain things, it actually doesn't matter. For example, emotional responses to color seem pretty universal. That's because emotional reactions to color aren't linked to perception, but instead an entirely separate kind of photoreceptor that gauges levels of blue and yellow light. Its main function is as a day-night sensor, found in even microbes. But in humans, it's hardwired to things like sleep patterns and emotions. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description. Also feel free to contact us. We're looking for more volunteer researchers to help with brainstorm and biohacks.